Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest and welcome back to the Color Farm. It is August 2022 and this month is Fresh Leaf Indigo Month here at the Color Farm. And the reason I know this is because I am the artist who has been invited in to work with this beautiful plant and I am here to harvest some. So join me as I harvest and then we're gonna go ahead and work on dyeing some wool skeins. I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through the process, but now let's get chopping. So as you know, we've had a very wet spring here. So that has impacted the indigo growth here at the farm. This is the crop that I have to work with today. I need to harvest enough to dye 12 100 gram skeins of wool. And I'm only gonna take part of that today so that I can play around with it a little bit. I have not dyed wool yarn yet with fresh leaf indigo only vat indigo so this is a new venture for me but it'll be fun to try it out and i know that people here at color quest are super interested in having more videos about yarn so let's start harvesting so max is here with me and he gave me instructions that i need to leave the bottom leaf here and cut just above that in hopes that we'll have a second growth here let's see and make sure i'm leaving that leaf just below okay we've taken about half and we'll bring this home and start the process and Make sure that it's going to be a good volume to create a nice medium, beautiful Japanese indigo color. All right, first things first, I need to scour the skeins of wool. Now, because I'm using indigo, I am not going to have to go through the mordant process. It's not necessary with indigo. Indigo's got its own staying power but I do have to wash the wool. And I have a lot of them. I have 12 skeins. So I'm going to do them in this very large pot here. And it's gonna take me a few times. I'm not gonna to try to do it all at once. You don't wanna stress wool out. You have to be cautious with that. So I will be doing them maybe four skeins at a time and then just using a very simple pH neutral dish soap, a little squirt in there. I wanna introduce the skeins into a sort of tepid water. You want it to match the air temperature as close as you can. You don't wanna shock the wool. You can risk felting wool. So you just really wanna be careful when you put it in or take it out that you are not changing the temperature of the environment too rapidly. So I've got some nice tepid water here. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce the skeins into that and allow them to sit on the stove at a simmer, not to exceed 160 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not gonna measure it, but I kinda have a good sense of what that is and then let them sit on the stove top for about 30 minutes in that soapy water, and then turn off the heat and just let them sit there. Let that temperature come back down, and then I will rinse them in also a sort of tepid water. Again, no shocking the wool. So let me get started, because it's gonna take me a little while. Now I received these wool yarn bundles all beautifully rolled together and already in a skein fashion so as you can see they have been beautifully 
put together for me into a ring, which is very important so that it doesn't get tangled. And you can see here, they've separated them with a simple piece of cotton string, done a bit of a loop here around so that they have a little room to flow and allow the dye to get in, but also stick together. So in this way, like this, I don't have to worry about them getting tangled, which is kind of amazing. Now, if you have yarn that is not already like this, you will have to make these wonderful looped skeins and then work on tying them off. So thank you, Amy and Max, for doing that so I didn't have to. <laughs> I know we're dying with freshly indigo, but I'm taking a little mini break today in the midst of all of that to actually have the honor of attending a community indigo vat dip with an incredible dye master from Mali. Abu Bakar Fofana was here in Seattle being hosted by Botanical Colors for a month of residency and he hosted several workshops and today was the last event a community indigo vat dip and i feel incredibly lucky to have been able to dip dye three skeins of marina wool for the color farm thank you very much botanical colors and bubble bakar i'm going to get back to a little fresh leaf come on let's go I have all of my skeins washed, scoured, and they are damp and ready to start dyeing. Now the big process, and that is getting the fresh leaf indigo ready to dye with. Now this is a process that I've shown in a previous video last year where we looked at the blender method. You can do this by hand, which I love to do, but with so much volume and the fact that I'm using wool yarn, I've decided that the blender method is the right way to go. So I need to strip the leaves from the stems, put them into a blender with some very cold water and start mashing them up. And that's gonna take me a while to do. I'll do it in little bursts, so that I can create enough volume of dye to submerge just one, maybe two skeins at a time. I just don't have a big enough production line here to be able to handle dyeing 12 to 15 skeins all at once. So these are going to be small batch dyes and that's okay. It'll take me some time. It is a really meditative and relaxing dye source to work with and so just gonna enjoy myself. So let's start stripping some of those leaves and getting them into the blender so that we can use them for dye on these wool skeins. So I've already stripped those leaves. They're sitting in cold water. I'm in the process of stripping these and I still have more to go. Now, when you harvest, if you're not gonna use it right away, you really need to use it within the first 24 hours and you need to keep the leaves and stems cold. You can see that this leaf has already released its blue here, probably just because of a little bit of damage done when it was being harvested, no big deal. This leaf is one that I'll use but I'll know that I'll get a little less blue out of it. So I'm gonna keep doing this, try to get all these leaves done, and then start the blender action. So we need to introduce oxygen into this process, which is one of the things that the blender's doing for us. So while we're breaking up the particles and releasing that chemical, then introducing oxygen kind of all at once, we're going to create the environment that's necessary to start the dyeing process. Now, 
When using the blender, you are going to have a lot of small particles. And when I previously did this, it wasn't that big of a deal. I used cheesecloth and was able to strain out most of the particles. However, for this, because I'm using wool yarn, I'm really not interested in trying to pick out the little tiny bits and pieces. So I wanna show you what I found and I've already tested it out and it works really well. Check it out. So I decided to invest in what's called cheesecloth bags. And really it's tightly woven cheesecloth and they're sewn into these little bags. They have a little drawstring here. I didn't actually use that, but I'm able to put the material that's been blended into this sack and then squeeze out the dye. And I'll show you how that goes and it worked so well. They were not expensive at all. You can get them in different sizes. I chose this particular size for no reason, but they have smaller and bigger ones. But you can see all the different ways they're used and really this is a must have when it comes to using the blender method for the fresh leaf indigo. So it is time to get ourselves into the blender. And don't forget that if you don't want green hands turning blue, then wear gloves. You can see that my nails underneath are already blue and that's from working with it a couple of days ago. So it will dye your hands. So feel free to wear gloves if you don't want that to happen.
Okay, so I've worked this second one for maybe five, seven minutes, and you can see how blue my hands are becoming. Now, not only is it gonna stain your skin, but if you get little droplets around, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're covered up if you don't wanna get them on your clothing. And if you wanna just keep an eye around you, you might wanna put a drop cloth down. It does splatter a little bit. And although it would fade on something like a countertop probably over time or with a little bit of cleaner you could kind of scrub it out but just be aware that it is potent stuff now I want to show you what I've done so far so you can see the difference or as it begins its additional oxidation what it looks like this is the one I have been working on for the last seven eight minutes and then this one is the one I did first. So if I put them next to each other, they have a bit of a different color. I think you can see it. This one's already going through even more of an oxidation process because it's just been sitting. And I'm going to wring it out, it still has a lot of dye in it, and hang it to dry. I want the oxygen to start moving through it more freely, getting into all these nooks and crannies to try to get as much oxygen into that as possible. Now, I am going to rinse these, but not now. I'm gonna let these sit and oxidize. Probably let them hang overnight, and then tomorrow I will wring them out. They may not be the same color, we can't tell right now because they're at different stages, but know that in order to build color on indigo, you need to do multiple dips. So if I wanted this darker after it dries, I would need to actually go through the whole process. I am in fact limited with both time and natural resources. So I will only be doing one pass on all of these skeins. I will not keep you with me as I go through this process. It's gonna take me a while. My hands are gonna get very blue but I need to get this finished up and delivered to the color farm so that they can put them into the CSA boxes at the end of the month. So I'm gonna keep working on this. We'll wring this out, hang it up to get its first oxidation dry, and then rinse them tomorrow. So I only have three more skeins left, and I was having to be fairly conservative with my indigo leaves because I was limited in how much I have. I'm now through 12 skeins, and I have enough leaves that I can measure this time. The weight of fiber to indigo leaf can be anywhere from two times to five times as much. So for example, I have 100 gram skeins, which means I could use anywhere from 200 to 500 grams of leaves. I can tell you I didn't even have close to 500 grams. I'm gonna go ahead and weigh out 200 in grams, and for these next three skeins, I'm actually going to blend and use that as a measurement. We'll see if we get a different color. So far, I have some variation across the skeins of wool, because I've been eyeing it. And the first few that I did, I didn't have many leaves, and so I was being very cautious. And then I started to get more leaves from harvest and was able to increase that volume. But I'll be interested to see if there's a real difference between measuring and trying to get at least 200 grams and see what that does. I can't even imagine <laughs> trying to process 500 grams at one time. It would be several times in the blender for me to get that amount of volume. But let me count how many times I do it. The other thing I want to mention is that I'm using cold water. The colder, the better. So if you have your leaves stored in ice water, 
and then you can use that water because it's really cold. That's the best way to use it. Another thing is working quickly. So really from the time you process, meaning the blender part, to when you put your fiber in should not exceed about five minutes. So you have to work pretty quickly. And then you're really not gonna work that fiber in that indigo dye for much longer than 10 minutes, maybe 15. And after that, you're not gonna be getting any benefit. So you don't need to have it sitting in there for long periods of time. And I gently am moving this around to try to get just more dye across all of the surfaces of the yarn. So all of those things are things to keep in mind. Now, you can rinse your fiber right after you dye. That can help with the oxidation, actually. I chose not to do that. I decided to let it sit and dry somewhat over the course of a night. That is not a necessary step, but one that I have read is a potential. So I went ahead and tried it out that way. So if you're pressed for time, you can go ahead and rinse right after you dye. And again, that rinse water will actually hasten the oxidation as well. So anyway, let's measure and try out using 200 grams of indigo leaves for each one of these skeins. So I can tell that there's more volume here than what I've been using. So I would say that I was probably around three most of the time. Sometimes I would add a little bit more, but having it up to about four or the equivalent of what looks like one liter here of liquid is the 200 grams of the leaves. I had to put these leaves in three different times to fill this all up. I was probably doing, I don't know, quarter cup, third cup, every time, maybe a little bit more. Wasn't very exacting on that. So we'll go ahead and put this in and see what it does from the color perspective. Friends, <laughs> I love this kind of thing that happens. So I have read that you should let it sit and cure, you know, like overnight before you rinse it. And I also know that when you're working with that indigo, when you take it from the vat and sort of plunge it into water pretty quickly after you pull it from the vat, that starts the oxidation process. It will begin to rinse some of it, not everything, but it also starts the oxidation process. Now, <laughs> I decide, what the heck, I haven't tried it on any of the other skeins. I'm gonna try it on these last three and I'm convinced, <laughs> sold on the fact that rinsing it right away is a pretty cool option. Not only you're kind of whisking away the residual dye that I don't think does a lot more to it, maybe. The color may end up being the same either way, but it's so cool to see. So I wanna show you when I do this next one, what happens when you introduce water right after. The oxidation's like immediate and it just, boom, goes to this really vivid blue. So check it out. And then we'll look at the end of everything, you know, what kind of feels right, if it makes a big difference. I know from a perspective of processing this whole thing, I think it's gonna be easier because the rinsing of the skeins a day later has been challenging. So let's see. So watch this. It's just an immediate shift is that oxidation happening so rapidly with the water. Look at that, right? <laughs> yeah, I like rinsing it right after. It feels right, actually. It feels much better. All right, it's done. It took a long time but I'm kind of excited to show you the results because you will be amazed at the variation. And it's a wonderful visual to show you how different dyes can be. 
based upon all kinds of factors. So no science there, just a really beautiful array of colors. So check this out. All right, there you have it. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Now, to be fair, these three were the Vat Indigo. So not fresh leaf, but starting from here over, this is all of the different colors that I got from the fresh leaf indigo. I did not measure, so that could be a factor. Maybe some of these had less than others, but these I harvested first, and this was the first batch that I did. I only had one that moved into that more blue realm. These were the ones that I did second, third, fourth, and so forth. Now, what I did want to show you are the three that I did last, and that's these three. Now, these three, I did immediate rinse after I dyed them, so the oxidation process was quick, and then I hung them to dry. Whereas these, they sat overnight with the dye, and then I rinsed them. So, is there much of a difference in color? I don't know. These might be slightly bluer, but for example, this one has more of that greenish cast to it. So does it make a huge difference on the color? No, or at least I didn't have a big color difference, except for those, which as I mentioned, were an earlier harvest. But I would suggest that it's easier to rinse and start that immediate oxidation with water after you die. So that was my takeaway from this. I am super excited. It's such a pretty bundle. Well, I hope you enjoyed that process. And if you are living someplace where fresh leaf indigo is in season now, go out there and pick some. It is really a truly wonderful plant to work with. And in this part of the world, it is very seasonal. So I hope that you get a chance to get some blue hands. And you can see my hands actually, it's already fading. Not so much on the nails, but it does come off relatively quickly. A couple of days, lots of hand washing <laughs> and that will fade. Now, next week on Color Quest, we're going to keep looking at wool, but this time in the form of clothing. I am starting a challenge with a company that only works in wool. And I'm going to get one of their shirts and see what I can do in the way of natural color. So come back next week and we will investigate how to use natural dyes in a couple of different formats in order to color your wardrobe of wool. Have a great week and I will see you next Friday. So it is time to get ourselves into time. <laughs>